Hey guys, it's Troy, and today's video, as promised, is Mock Draft 5.0. I'm going through all 60 picks. First and second round, I'm going to break down all the players, and I'm going to tell you where these players should be going, where they should be drafted, and why I think they should be drafted in those spots. So before we get into it, make sure you like this video. This video took lots of time, lots of research, lots of editing, so we'd love if you drop a like on it if you enjoy it. The like button was made for videos like this. That's what I think. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if it's your first time here. Just know that I do NBA videos all the time about all kinds of different topics. Going for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're so close. This is still a pretty new channel on YouTube and one of the fastest growing YouTube channels that we have that is basketball related. Okay, so without further ado, <sighs> Okay, let's get into it. Mock Draft 5.0. And the first pick is going to be made by the Minnesota Timberwolves. And they are picking Anthony Edwards from the University of Georgia. So in terms of Anthony Edwards, this guy, 6'5", shooting guard, really well built. Dude is a tank. Frustrating player, though, who might not make the best decisions with the ball. He's a streaky shooter. But I think he could be a top five shooting guard in the NBA if things end up breaking the right way for him. I don't think Minnesota is really in love with anybody here at that number one pick, so I could see them trading this pick. And in that case, I think they might go with one of the sure things in this draft that will have a lot of trade value and allow them to get the guy that maybe they like a little better, but farther down in the lottery and still pick up some additional assets. Pick number two is gonna be made by the Golden State Warriors. They are going with Israel's Denny Evdia. Avdia just became the youngest Israeli league MVP. His team won the championship. He's a point forward, good passer, good size, really unselfish player. And this guy improved a lot over the past year. I think he's going to be a solid player. We're not looking at like a Dragon Bender, Mario Hazonia type deal with this international player. I think he's going to be really, really solid guy. Hustle player for a few years while he kind of adjusts to the speed of the NBA and the way the NBA game is played. But I see a ceiling as a third option on a winning team. And like Minnesota, Golden State is also rumored to be trading this pick, but they really love Denny Abdia. And I think if they stick in this spot, he would be a good option for them. Pick number three is going to be made by the Charlotte Hornets. They're going with James Wiseman from the University of Memphis. Dude is huge, 7'1", 7'6", wingspan. He is a pick and roll finisher. I think that being a rim runner is his strength right now. And I, I, I'd really like to see him stretch the floor a little bit, maybe be a better defender. But right now he does have a lot of talent. He's gonna play huge minutes for Charlotte. He will grow with their young guys, so a solid piece for them. And I think if he goes to the Hornets, with all the minutes he's gonna be getting, potential rookie of the year on this team. Pick number four is going to be made by the Chicago Bulls. They are going with LaMelo Ball from California, but most recently playing in Australia. Great pick for Chicago. They are on record saying they want a playmaker. He's got good size at 6'7". Awesome passer. So fun to watch. And he's still going to get guys the shots. And I think if he learns to take better shots himself, he can be a really solid player. So with the Bulls, he would be playing with Zach Levine, Kobe White. That's a nice three guard lineup right there. Then he's also gonna be setting up Lowry Markinen, Wendell Carter for shots. Could he be top five in the NBA in assists as a rookie? I think it's definitely a possibility. Pick number five is gonna be made by the Cleveland Cavaliers. They were picking Onyeka Okongwu in Mock Draft 5.0. Okongwu actually uh, really good friends with LaMelo. They grew up together in California. This guy's defense is his calling card. The Cavs were awful on defense last year, and they also need front court help because who knows what's going to happen with Kevin Love? Who knows what's going to happen with Andre Drummond? But put him in a nice defensive scheme, let him go to work. Another nice building block to add to Darius Garland and Colin Sexton. Pick number six is going to be made by the Atlanta Hawks. They are going with Tyrese Halliburton, Iowa State, point guard, shooting guard combo kind of guy. I see lots of potential with him, high basketball IQ. He can play with Trey, he can back him up. Excellent playmaker for ISU. He really did it all for Iowa State. 
He's the type of guy who's not flashy, but he is a winner. I get some Malcolm Brogdon vibes with Tyrese Halliburton because he just makes it work with the talent that he has. I'm a big fan of this guy. Pick number seven is going to be made by the Detroit Pistons. They're going with Killian Hayes. 6'5", gifted passer, solid defender, good pick and roll player. And he has that potential to be a good shooter. And that's going to determine a lot of his success at the NBA level. So, you know, as they say, the tools are there. So maybe add Killian Hayes to a rotation of Derrick Rose, Blake Griffin, Christian Wood, who I think they're going to re-sign, Siku, and... He could be their future starting point guard for them. Just lots of potential with Killian Hayes. Some folks even have him as the number one ranked player in this draft. Pick number eight, going to be made by the New York Knicks. They're going with Isaac Okoro, freshman one and done player with Auburn. He projects as a three and D guy. Really needs to work on his shot though. Did not shoot it well from the three point line or from the free throw line in college. One of the best defenders in college, though, and one of the best defenders in this draft, defends multiple positions. He impacts the game without scoring, and he's usually going to make the right play because he is a high IQ player. Good building block for New York. I see lots of Andre Iguodala in Isaac Okoro. Pick number nine will be made by the Washington Wizards. They are going with Devin Vassell. He is an awesome defender as well. And his offense needs to catch up a little bit. I think it will, though. But he is tailor-made for today's NBA as a 3 and D type of player. Kind of a Tayshawn Prince type of player because he is a glue guy who can step in right now. Great value late in the top 10 with Vassell. So if John Wall comes back healthy, you already have Brad Beal. Add Devin Vassell to that. Maybe Wizards are going back to the playoffs. Pick number 10 is going to be made by the Phoenix Suns and took forever to get here, but they're going with Obi Toppin, a.k.a. Ob Top, a.k.a. Obi Wan Top Nobi. So many people on this channel love Obi Toppin. They were saying that he was drafted way too late in Mock Draft 4.0. Well, he's late in this one as well, but I like Ob Top's game. So talented. He's a killer on offense. He scores at every level, and he is a guy who can produce from day one. His biggest issue is on the defensive end, but maybe if you partner him with a guy like DeAndre Ayton, it could help out with that a little bit. Rookie of the year potential for Obi Toppin. Kind of a poor man's Amari Stoudemire, who was also a former son. So if the Suns get Obi Toppin in this spot, that's great value. Pick number 11, gonna be made by the San Antonio Spurs. They are going with Cole Anthony, who is a one and done prospect from North Carolina. Son of former NBA player Greg Anthony, he was top five before the season started, but due to some injuries and North Carolina not really having a good year, he has tumbled quite a bit in these mock drafts. He's a score first point guard. He can play make a little bit. He is tough, and I like him in a rotation. The Spurs need a star. Cole Anthony could maybe be one of those guys who's undervalued, and then you end up getting him late in the lottery and he ends up being one of the better players in the draft. Pick number 12 is going to be made by the Sacramento Kings. They're going with Patrick Williams, who was a teammate of Devin Vassell, who was taking a few picks earlier. Williams is a versatile offensive threat who can serve as a shot creator or a screener. He can really fill a range of roles for the Kings. He's a gritty player who does the little things. This guy is really moving up draft boards. I had him about 20 in my last draft. And now he's in the top 15, so he is moving on up. Pick number 13, going to be made by the New Orleans Pelicans. They're going with Jalen Smith from the University of Maryland. He was on a really good Maryland team this past year. He's a coordinated big guy who can shoot it. He can handle the ball. I see a lot of Miles Turner with him. His defense needs to improve away from the rim a little bit, though. I really like his potential and his intangibles for the Pelicans. I think he could start for them next year, even over Jackson Hayes. Pick number 14 is going to be made by the Boston Celtics. They are going with Sadiq Bay. Bay is an ideal 3 and D type of player, and I think teams are going to love him come draft night. He makes an impact, even if he's not scoring. And he went to Villanova, and I think there's something just about these Villanova guys. They always seem to do really well in the NBA. So I think that bodes well for Sadiq Bey in the pros. I love the idea of him coming off the bench and making an impact with Marcus Smart on the Celtics. I think that would be really fun to watch. 
Pick number 15 is going to be made by the Orlando Magic. They're going with RJ Hampton, who, like LaMelo, played overseas this past year. He skipped college. He played in New Zealand. He's a combo guard. He's a shifty athlete with a speedy first step. Does need to get better with his jump shot. Needs to have a reliable jumper. But long-term upside here, and he has top five pick potential. So just imagine him as a future starter with Markel Fultz. And what if both of those guys reach their potential? That's a really scary backcourt. Pick number 16, going to be made by the Portland Trailblazers. They're going with Aaron Neesmith from Vanderbilt. And he's an excellent shooter. He shot over 50% from three in college. So he's a floor spacer that we can add to the Blazers. Does need to work on his defense a little bit, but a good score off the bench for them. Also, he's a high character guy. He had some injuries last year, and that's hurt his stock just a little bit, but he seems to be recovered. So if you can get him just outside of the lottery, that's good value. Pick number 17 is Minnesota's second pick of the draft, and they are going with Precious Achua from the University of Memphis, teammate of James Wiseman. Maybe this pick gets traded as well if they trade that number one pick, still up in the air, but he is an elite defender who can guard four, maybe five positions on the floor. His offense is still a work in progress, but Minnesota has tons of offense already. They really need defenders on this team. But Precious is an excellent athlete with lateral quickness and explosive leaping ability. This guy plays really, really hard and a dirty work kind of player. Pick number 18, going to be made by the Dallas Mavericks. They are going with Tyrell Terry. He is a Stanford man, and he is a shooter with deep, deep range. His big issue is that he's pretty undersized. Not really a point guard right now. Is he a point guard? Is he a two guard? He's mainly just a shooter because he can get his shot off anywhere. And despite his lack of size, he is a crafty finisher at the basket. Really competes on both ends of the floor. One thing I've heard about him, though, he's put on lots of muscle since the college season ended, so he's really helping to answer those questions about his strength and durability. But hey, you gotta surround Luca with shooters, and this guy, one of the best shooters in this draft. Pick number 19 is gonna be made by the Brooklyn Nets, and they are going with Josh Green of Arizona. He's shooting up draft boards. I had him barely in the first round in the last mock. Now I've got him in the top 20. He's a nice complimentary player who can hit the open three. He can make nice plays. He's a good defender. Loads of potential. Nice young guy for the Nets to develop. Pick number 20, going to be made by the Eastern Conference champion Miami Heat. They're going with Kira Lewis Jr. from the University of Alabama. Awesome shot creator and scorer. One of the fastest dudes in the draft. His defense, pretty good as well. One of the best players that we've still got on the board, and I think he would make Kendrick Nunn expendable for the Heat. I love him coming off the bench with Tyler Hero. Pick number 21, going to be made by the Philadelphia 76ers. They've got so many picks in this draft. They're going with Tyrese Maxey on this one. He is clutch. He's a winner. Also a bit undersized. I see his role in the NBA as a guy who lights it up off the bench, but he can be a bulldog on defense as well. Kind of Pat Beverly meets Lou Williams kind of player. Nice value for the Sixers here just outside of the top 20. This is the first of six picks for them in the draft. So I'm going to be talking about the Sixers a lot more in this video. Pick number 22 going to be made by the Denver Nuggets. They are picking Alexei Pokoshevsky. He is a long and lanky player, really athletic. He's also a floor spacer who can really shoot the three ball. Dude is like seven feet tall, but barely over 200 pounds. Skills of a guard in that big man's body. Can he put on the extra weight and the strength to handle the rigors of the NBA? And will his athletic game translate from overseas to the NBA when he's playing against the best players in the world? So I like him for Denver because they are competing for a title next year. They don't need help right away. He's going to spend lots of time in the G League, hopefully be a solid rotation player in a couple of years. But just imagine him on a G League team with Bowl Bowl. I don't think anybody is going to be able to score with those two dudes out there just completely putting a lid on the basket with those long arms and defensive potential. Pick number 23, going to be made by the Utah Jazz. They are going with Malachi Flynn, who makes his first appearance in any of my mock drafts. He is moving up draft boards. He led San Diego State to one of the best seasons in school history. 
He can knock down shots at a high level. He can defend on the ball. His feel for the game is really, really nice. A little undersized, but a great motor, great work ethic. Would be a really good backup for Mike Conley and eventually maybe a starter for Utah. And I also think Mike Conley is the perfect guy for him to learn under. Pick number 24, going to be made by the Milwaukee Bucks, Milwaukee, Algonquin, for the good land. They are picking Desmond Bain. Bucks are getting a steal here with Bain. He is a high IQ guard who plays hard. Poet didn't even know it. He already has a veteran skill set. He projects favorably as a rotation player. And I think if Dante DiVincenzo doesn't quite take that next leap, he could be the starter at two guard for Milwaukee by the end of next year. Pick number 25, gonna be made by the Oklahoma City Thunder. They are going with Zeke Naji. He is a big man. He is strong inside. He has a nice mid-range game, also a solid rebounder. Big question for him is his defense. He is a real negative on defense, but he has the work ethic to get better. He's a nice young asset for Oklahoma City. Pick number 26, gonna be made by the Boston Celtics. They are going with Isaiah Stewart. He's a one and done player from Washington. Muscular big guy who just plays his tail off, possesses a vintage interior game. Could he be a Zach Randolph type of player if he puts it all together? I think he could be. But this is Boston's second pick in the draft. They need big guys and Stewart can be a solid big guy for them. Does need to improve on his passing though. Pick number 27 is the New York Knicks second pick in the draft. They are going with Trey Jones from Duke University. Floor general, unselfish player, team first kind of guy, impactful defender. Similar type of player to his brother Tyus Jones who plays for the Grizzlies and backs up John ja Morant. But Trey Jones is a really underrated player. I think Knicks fans will like him a lot. Reminds me a little bit of Chris Duhon, who had a really solid career in the league, but I see him as a bit better than Chris Duhon. Pick number 28, going to be made by your world champion, Los Angeles Lakers. They are going with Xavier Tillman, who is a Michigan State guy. Maybe it's the Michigan State thing, but I get Draymond Green vibes from him. He's a winning player. He can easily pair with star shot creators and just really go to work with his playmaking ability and his versatility. I think he could be a rotation player right away. This pick has Lakers written all over it. Pick number 29 is going to be made by the Toronto Raptors. They are going with Tyler Bay, no relation to Sadiq Bay, who can be a difference maker on defense, be a complimentary player on offense, really nice rebounder, almost 10 a game, and he's about 6'7", 6'8". The Raptors are awesome at developing talent, so I'm eager to see what they can turn the second bay of the draft into. And pick number 30, Boston's third pick of the first round. They are going international here with Leandro Bolmaro. This is a stash pick for them to keep overseas. Six foot eight wing who can play with legit speed and attack at a high level. Really good playmaker for a guy his size. But the question is what happens when he doesn't have the ball, when he's not facilitating? How does he make an impact? He is not a great shooter right now. In the past, though, Boston has really liked big playmakers. So I think it's good value for them in the late first round. Okay, that's it for the first round. So let me remind you, if you haven't already liked the video, if you're enjoying it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Second round coming at you right now, picks 31 through 60. So unlike the first round, if you need a refresher, guys in the second round who get picked won't necessarily have a guaranteed contract. So a lot of the guys who I'm going to be naming here, especially as we get into the picks in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they're guys who are going to be two-way players, maybe guys who spend some time in the G League team. And then, you know, you're always going to have some guys who really surprise you and they may end up being all-stars one day. So that's what makes it kind of fun. So pick number 31 in Mock Draft 5.0, going to be made by the Dallas Mavericks. They are picking Paul Reed from DePaul. Paul from DePaul, and he stuffed the stat sheet as a junior at DePaul, kind of a late bloomer. He can be a difference maker on defense, though. He's a player who is still improving. I really like his defense on the Mavericks. I'm a big fan of him. Pick number 32 is going to be made by the Charlotte Hornets. They are picking Daniel 
Oturu. And he took a big leap as a sophomore. He is a solid athlete. He has a nice touch around the basket. He rebounds the ball at a high level. Good bench piece for Charlotte. Pick number 33 is going to be made by the Minnesota Timberwolves. They're going with Nico Mannion, who was teammates at Arizona with Zeke Naji and Josh Green, who got picked in the first round. One of the best passers in this draft. Minnesota needs guys to help run the offense behind D'Angelo Russell. Nico was a really high recruit coming out of high school, and I think he has that pro resume. Really good value in the early second round. Pick number 34 is the Sixers' second pick of this draft. They are going with Theo Maladon. And since they have tons of picks, I think they'll go international with at least a couple of their picks so they can keep the guys overseas but still retain their rights and let them develop for a year or two before they bring them over. Theo has a nice feel for the game. He is a strong floor general who has become a really nice shooter. He projects as a solid backup point guard down the line. Pick number 35 is going to be made by the Sacramento Kings, and they are going with Jameis Ramsey, who is a fearless shot maker. He just needs to improve his playmaking, but he has intriguing potential as a two-way guard. One of those irrational confidence guys like J.R. Smith or Dion Waiters, he is flashy, he is confident, and when he is hitting the three ball or just hitting his shots, he just keeps on shooting. Pick number 36, hey, the Sixers are back again. They're going with Vernon Carey, who is a freshman at Duke, played with Trey Jones this year. Throwback big man with a modern touch, but questions remain about his shot and his defensive potential. Maybe a poor man's DeMarcus Cousins kind of player, kind of a Jalil Okafor type of player. Nice backup center for Embiid, though. Pick 37, gonna be made by the Washington Wizards. They're going with Cassius Winston. And this happens every year. One of those seniors who is one of the best players in the country who falls to the second round in favor of other guys who teams think have a bit more potential. But Cassius Winston, another one of those Michigan State players like Xavier Tillman, he's a winner, though, who's going to have a 10-year NBA career and I think would be a really nice backup for John Wall in Washington. Pick number 38 goes to the New York Knicks, and they're going with Jaden McDaniels. He is a 6'10 forward with skills and the potential to shoot it. Actually, even the brother of the McDaniels who plays for Charlotte really needs to put on weight though, but in terms of talent, first round pick, sometimes lets his emotions get the better of him on the floor. All in all though, has loads of talent, just needs to be smarter, needs to put it all together. He could be a Rashard Lewis type of player, make an all-star team. He could be an Anthony Randolph type of player and he's out of the league in a couple of years. Pick number 39 coming at you from the New Orleans Pelicans. They are going with Robert Woodard II, 6'7", 7'1 wingspan. He has displayed some shooting touch while he's been in college. High character guy, good defensive footwork, needs to make quicker decisions on the floor. All in all, still improving his game. Not a bad pick in the late 30s. Pick number 40, going to be made by my team, the Memphis Grizzlies, and we're going with Cassius Stanley, who is another Cassius in this draft. He's also a Duke guy, super athlete, nice rebounder. He can shoot it a little bit. He competes hard, but he needs overall improvement in his game. Doesn't always make the best decisions on the floor. Good value, though, right in the 40s. Pick number 41, going to be made by the San Antonio Spurs. They're going with Killian Tilly from Gonzaga. Easily a top 20 talent, but lots of injury concerns with Tilly. He's 6'10". He knocks down threes like Davis Bertans. He's a nice defender. He's usually going to make the right play on the floor. This has Spurs written all over him. Really well suited for today's NBA. Fits like a glove in the Greg Popovich system. Pick number 42, it's another New Orleans pick, and they're going with Isaiah Joe. Good size for a two guard. When in doubt, he's just gonna shoot the three. He averages about 10 three-point attempts per game, and he makes about 30-something percent of them. He can defend, he can attack the rim a little bit. Does need to get better at those parts of his game, though, rather than just chucking it from three. But hey, let's surround Zion and Brandon Ingram with shooters and try to make it to the playoffs, right? Pick number 43, Sacramento Kings, third pick of the draft, and they're going with Tyshawn Alexander from Creighton. 
Smart player, good shooter. He can run a little bit of point guard, but more of a two guard right now. Does a lot of things well. Just a guy to add to that Kings guard depth. I like him in the early 40s. Pick number 44, Chicago Bulls. They're going with Elijah Hughes. Straight up hustle guy, good team player. Doesn't score it especially efficiently, but a guy who's gonna get after it, give you good minutes on the floor. He can come in and change the tempo of a game with his play. Pick number 45 by the Orlando Magic, Jay Scrub. He's a Juco guy, one of the best junior college players last year. Athletic two guard, NBA body, kind of a three and D kind of player. Excels in the open court. Good value here. I like his shooting for the Magic because they need lots of shooting. Pick number 46, Portland Trailblazers going with Devin Dotson from Kansas. Only 6'2", goes hard to the rim. Draws lots of fouls though. He's a really fast guy. I'm talking like Russell Westbrook fast. Needs a better outside shot. Really exciting and fun player to watch. If the Blazers do end up taking Dotson, I actually like him better than Anthony Simons, who they have right now. Pick number 47 is the Boston Celtics. Their fourth pick in the draft. They're going with Yam Mater. And let me just preface this. I'm no Israeli basketball scout. If I said the guy's name wrong, forgive me. But I've looked at his highlights on YouTube. I've been reading a lot about him, trying to get a scouting report together. But he's a 6'3 point guard from Israel, only 19 years old. He makes quick decisions with the basketball. Good floor general type player. Nice ball handling. Good passing. Good handle. Sometimes, though, he'll go for the flashy pass and he'll turn it over. So he needs to get better with that. He also needs to try on defense a little better. Also needs to add strength to be a little bit more effective in defending those stronger players who he's going to run into. So a guy who's young needs to improve his overall game, but he can stay overseas for a bit and continue to get better. Pick number 48, going to be made by the Golden State Warriors. This is their second pick in the draft, and they're going with Nick Richards. High energy big man. He can rebound it. He can block shots. Doesn't have much of a jumper right now or playmaking skills. I think, though, he can be a third string center. Kind of reminds me of Marquise Chris, who the Warriors have now. Pick number 49, going to be made by the Sixers, and they are going with Peyton Pritchard. This dude is a leader. This guy makes shots. He's a smart player. He tries on defense. Every team needs a player like this. Kind of maybe Philly's new TJ McConnell. Pick number 50, going to be made by the Atlanta Hawks. They're going with Reggie Perry, who is a teammate of Robert Woodard II, who New Orleans picked in the late 30s. He's also a Mississippi State guy. He's a rim runner, high motor, nice rebounder who does need to get better at rebounding and shooting. But I wanted to throw him in here because Starkville is a fun town and I used to live there. Pick number 51, another Warriors pick. And they are going with Udoka Azabuki. This guy is built like a young Shaq. He even shoots free throws like him. And that's about where the comparisons stop. He's not going to score much. Maybe he gets a put back off a rebound every now and then, but you have him in a playoff series. Let him wear down the opposing center while your starter gets a breather. He's a good 12th man for the Warriors on their roster. Pick number 52, another Sacramento Kings pick. Emmanuel Quickly is his name, and IQ is his nickname. Only 6'3", but with a wingspan of almost 7 feet. He's got good defensive potential, high IQ competitor, shot it well from the three-point line last year, quick release. Not as good near the hoop, though, but Sacramento has liked Kentucky guys in the past, so I'm giving them another one. Pick number 53, Oklahoma City Thunder. They are going with Caleb Wesson of Ohio State. He's a late bloomer. He's a big guy who can rebound and stretch the floor. Really nice basketball IQ, could be a solid role player down the line. He also is in the best shape of his life. Just lost 20 pounds, and I was looking at video of him online just draining three-pointer after three-pointer. I don't know. I kind of like his game. Pick number 54, going to be made by the Indiana Pacers. This is their only pick in the draft. They're going with Jordan Nawara. He scores a lot of points, maybe not the most efficient at it, not much of a passer either, maybe a little bit of a chucker. His defense is solid when he's on the ball, but not much of a team defender. Pick number 55, Brooklyn Nets. They are going with Skylar Mays. 
This is a guy who is in between the one and the two. He's got good handle, good steal rate. He gets hot really quick as a scorer. More focused on offense rather than defense right now. He can probably make it as a 14th or 15th man next year. Pick number 56 going to be made by the Charlotte Hornets. They are going with Grant Riller, one of those four-year players from a small school, University of Charleston. Scored a ton of points in college. The question is, can he do it in the NBA? He's a combo guard who can be instant offense off the bench, that kind of player. Pick number 57, going to be made by the Clippers. They're only picking the draft. They are going with Jordan Ford. He's another senior combo guard. This one from St. Mary's. He shoots it from deep. He's a crafty scorer. He can score in bunches. So just a big time shot maker. Think Fred Van Vliet or Patty Mills. Maybe a team takes a flyer on him somewhere in the 50s. Pick number 58 is another Sixers pick. They're going with Trey Tingle of Oregon. And I like this guy. I feel if his name wasn't Tinkle, dude would maybe go about 15 spots higher. I don't know. But he's smart, versatile forward, good playmaker, good shooter, solid rebounder. He is older than some of the other players in this draft. But Philly needs shooters, so maybe he makes the team. Pick number 59, going to be made by the Toronto Raptors. They are going with Kareem Mane. So possibly the biggest unknown in the draft. He was born in Senegal. He was raised in Montreal. The basketball level he was playing at in Canada this past year Better than high school, not as good as NCAA college level though. So he is a raw player with loads of potential. He's a slasher and score kind of player. He'll need to get in that Raptors G League system and we'll have to see what he can do. And the final pick, pick number 60, going to be made by the New Orleans Pelicans. They're going with Kenyon Martin Jr. Kmart Jr. Remember Kmart, the original Kenyon Martin, he was drafted number one in 2000. Now his son is the last pick 20 years later in the mock draft 5.0. He committed to Vanderbilt, but coming straight from a post-grad year of high school, he's going directly into the draft. KJ was a man among boys at the prep level. He was a force around the rim on both ends. He was scoring at will. He was swatting shots on the defensive end. Check out his YouTube highlights. This guy looks like the best player out there. He also showed key growth as a shooter, as a passer, and as a ball handler. I think he's worth a shot with the 60th pick. Okay, there you have it. Mock Draft 5.0, all 60 picks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little bit of something. Let me know in the comments who you want on your team. Let me know in the comments who I have too low, who I have too high. Hey, while you're here, would love if you have... And since you made it this far, would love if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's try to get 2,000 likes on this video. I think we can do it. Also going for 10,000 subscribers that we're hoping to hit by the end of the year. So make sure you're subbed up because I'm posting NBA content all the time. Draft content, free agent content, off-season content, anything and everything NBA related. I'm going to cover it on this channel. Okay, well, hey, this was lots of fun. I'm going to do another mock draft a couple days before the actual draft on November 18th. So make sure you stick around, tune in for that. So thanks a lot for watching. This is Troy with the Half Court Report, and I'll see you next time.